Hello, thank you for watching the very first pre-class video for Algebra 1 Honors at Harrison High School. I'm Mr. Bowman, and I'll be providing these videos for you to watch before every class meeting. A big part of your responsibility as a student in the Algebra class this year is to come to class prepared to talk about the idea or ideas at hand for that class meeting. Here, for example, is a list of the objectives for the next class meeting, and they're written in I can statements. What I'm trying to convey to you here is that hopefully by the end of the next class meeting, you'll be able to say, I, as the student, I can add, subtract, multiply, and divide integers, and that I can add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions. And I will include that information at the beginning of every one of the pre-class videos this year. Since the goals for this video involve integers, we should probably take a second to talk about what integers actually are. Uh, the set of integers is a set of numbers. The definition is as follows. The set of integers consists of all of the whole numbers. The whole numbers are the numbers you would count with. Now I've drawn a number line, we actually call it the real number line in mathematics, down here at the bottom of the screen. And on the number line, you, I've already marked off some of the whole numbers. The whole numbers are just the numbers you would count with. So starting at 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., uh, forever in the direction of positive infinity. Those are the whole numbers. Now, integers also contain the opposite of those whole numbers. Every whole number has an opposite that if you add those two numbers together you would get zero. For example, the opposite of two is negative two. Uh, it's also true that the opposite of negative four is positive four. Every integer has an opposite. Now the one number we've not specifically talked about yet is zero and it's also in, a, a set, uh, it's also in the set of integers. In fact, you could think of it as the number that separates the positive integers from the negative integers. So to actually add and subtract integers, a lot of folks will use that number line as some kind of support or scaffolding. Now there are other models that work too. There's a student that I worked recently with who when she was asked to add or subtract integers would always think about money. And when she saw uh, a positive integer or thought of adding an integer, she would think of uh, adding money to her bank account and when she was asked to subtract an integer or you know, add, a, add the opposite of an integer, add a negative number, she would think of taking money out of her account. Uh, I'm certain you've probably seen this before, but if I think of adding integers, then I'm thinking about moving in the positive direction. If I were going to add 2 starting at 0, I would go in the positive direction, 2. If I were going, then going to from there, from that value 2, if I were going to subtract 5, I would go in the negative direction. So you could almost think of the sign in front of the operation adding, meaning, hey, let's head toward the positive direction, and subtracting, meaning let's head toward the negative direction. Now you don't have to use that formal process to find the sum or difference of integers, but if you struggle with this, that's a support that might be able to help you. Well, let's try a few of these. Let's make sure that we know how to add and subtract integers. Let's try this example. Let's try 7 plus a negative 3. Now, it's important to notice that these grouping symbols are here to indicate that this is adding a negative 3. I know a lot of folks who, when they see add a negative, they're going to rewrite it. They'll think of combining this into one operation, and you can do that. You can say that 7 plus a negative 3 is the same as simply 7 minus 3. You could think of it as uh, the fact that these signs are different. You know, adding a negative means the same thing as, thing as subtraction. And of course, 7 minus 3 is 4. So 7 plus a negative 3 will definitely be 4. Now we've got three integers to take care of here. We've got a negative 15 plus 12 minus a negative 4. A lot of people will then say, well, minus a negative 
means the same thing as plus. And you can probably do this without taking care of the two signs first, but this is a method for success. Now that I have simply operations here and no double signs, negative 15 plus 12, if I take $15 away from you, but then I give you $12 back, I still owe you $3. So if I owe you $3 and then I give you four more, you've come out $1 ahead. We're talking about positive one here. So one should be the result there, the value that we're seeking. Now we've got bigger numbers down here. 40 plus a negative 56 is the same as 40 minus 56. And then plus a negative 3 means minus 3. So I'll go back to that money model again that I like. If you take $40 and then you take 56, so if I give you $40, I should say, and I take $56 away from you, I, I owe you $16, and if I take three more, that's a negative 19. So what I want you to do now is I want you to try these three items, please. And I'm going to ask you to pause the video briefly. Uh, and in a few seconds, I will show you the work I used and the answers I came up with. And we can kind of check and, and assess how you're doing. So hit pause right now and try these three items very quickly, please. OK, hopefully you've got answers that you like. Uh, if I take negative 11 and subtract a negative 2, it really means the same as negative 11, negative 11 plus 2, because minus a negative means the same thing as positive. And negative 11 plus 2 gives me negative 9. So I think the first one is negative 9. 9 plus a negative 16 would be the same as 9 minus 16, plus 7. And now I can say, all right, 9 minus 16, that's negative 7. Negative 7 plus 7 is actually 0. Those completely canceled. And here, negative 10 plus 3 minus a negative 8. I see the two signs again. So minus a negative means the same thing as a positive. So let's rewrite this last term as positive 8. And now I have negative 10 plus 3, which is negative 7, again. Negative 7 plus 8 is 1. How did you do? Hopefully you did very well. The rules for multiplying and dividing integers are actually quite simple to work with. If the signs are the same, meaning if you have a situation where uh, both the factors that you're multiplying or the divisor and the dividend are both positive or both negative, you're going to get a positive result. If the signs are different, if one of the factors that you're multiplying is positive and the other is negative, or if, for example, let's say you're taking a negative number and dividing by a positive number, then your result will be negative. Let's try a few of these. Now it's important to note that in algebra class, we're not going to refer to multiplication very often anymore like this. We wouldn't say 3 times 4 using the little cross which almost looks like an X here. That's not what, what, that's not what you're going to see in algebra class and there's a reason why. Uh, the reason why is that we're going to very quickly introduce variables into algebra and using that symbol looks a lot like the letter X which is probably the most commonly used letter for a variable. So instead you'll see one of two things. You'll either see 3 with a little dot times 4. This little dot is a symbol for multiplication. Or sometimes you'll just see two numbers separated by parentheses with no other operator. You know, there's not a plus or a minus sign or any kind of symbol to indicate division there. So if you don't see a symbol, but you see two factors separated by parentheses, that's another indication that we're talking about multiplication. So here we have a negative 5 times a negative 8. There's that symbol for multiplication. The signs are the same, negative here, negative there. That means my product is going to have a positive outcome. We're talking about positive 40 here. 
And this second item is multiplication as well. It's, we didn't put parentheses around it, but they could have put parentheses around the negative 12. It's certainly not subtraction, though. Negative 12 times negative 3. The signs here are different. You've got a negative factor times a positive factor. So I'll multiply the numbers. That's 36, but I've got to remember the thing about the signs. It's negative 36. And this is division. Uh, similarly to the way that we're not going to use an old-fashioned symbol for multiplication now, we wouldn't take 12 divided by 6. That's not really a symbol that you'll see used very often in algebra. We're going to write div division like a fraction. So negative 48 divided by 3. I know what 48 divided by 3 is at 16. And since the signs are different, the result has to be negative. Okay, it's time for you to hit pause again, and on your own, try these three items. So hit pause, try these three items, come up with answers that you like, and when you've got them, hit play, and we'll check it out. Okay, hopefully you've got answers that you like. This first item is division. It's written like a fraction. And what they're asking us to do is take negative 72 and divide it by negative 8. Uh, let's see, I know a number that if you multiply it by 8 gives you 72, that would be 9. And I guess the question I should ask myself now is should it be positive or negative? Well, the signs of both the divisor and the dividend are the same. I should just have positive 9 as my result. This is multiplication. This is 11 times a negative 6. It's not 11 minus 6. Notice the parentheses here. That indicates that we're taking two factors, and I've worked with students before that felt more comfortable drawing both sets of parentheses in there, and if that comforts you, I say do it. But this is 11 times a negative 6. Well, 11 times 6 is 66. But since the signs of the two factors are different, this has to be a negative 66. And this is multiplication as well. There's the symbol for multiplication. 13 times 2 is 26, but since it's really negative 13 times negative 2, well, I guess my result is still 26, isn't it? Because since the signs of the two factors are the same, the resulting product has to be the same as well. Well, that's all for this video. I hope that you've had a chance to practice the skills you need for adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing integers. When you get to class, we will work primarily with fractions and adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing those. So I hope you're prepared for class now, a little bit more at least, and I'm looking forward to seeing you very soon. Thanks for watching.